We wake up feeling famished, like we haven't eaten in days. Now, this is down to a recent change involving stored calories. Since the last episode, we've updated to an experimental build from April, and that comes with a couple of important changes. Basically, the old values for normal body weight were much too low for most characters. The new values now more correctly take your body size and strength into account. For almost all characters, this is a buff overall as it allows you to store more total calories without being overweight. However, because this is being calculated mid-save, we're actually a bit behind the 8-ball. This only affects existing characters, and it's pretty easy to fix. Mellifero is pretty small. She's only 5'3", but she has 10 strength, which is just a bit above average. If we were playing a really brawny character, we might actually be in some serious trouble here. As you can see, we're currently taking a 5% speed debuff for being underweight. 5% isn't much on its own, but it's compounding with the debuff we have for being chilly and our thirst for a 15% debuff. That's before pain or anything. Speed penalties, as we've discussed, add up very quickly. But this is easily fixable. We just need to find food. We start wolfing down handfuls of chocolate. Maybe we'll say that this vending machine diet is the culprit. We've got the sugar shakes and our body is craving some real nourishment. There is one of those emergency protein rations they started rolling out right before the world fell apart. It's like eating a brick of sawdust, but we almost don't care. We force it down anyway. Our left leg is still sore, but most of the cuts have scabbed over. It looks like we'll be just fine. Also, we've woken up without any cravings. Other than food, of course. It looks like the nicotine addition wears off fairly quickly. We will no longer suffer any negative effects if we don't smoke. That seems a little silly to me, though. We've been having nicotine just about every day since the cataclysm began, even if we've been going sort of easy on it. There's no way that someone would just be over-smoking in that amount of time. The addiction mechanics are very old and they're in a pretty messy state right now, but that's okay. We're just going to roleplay it. We'll keep on smoking even if we don't actually have to. So today, we're aiming to get down to the fountain here and collect some water. It is 6 in the morning and we're currently dealing with a couple of problems. This store has got a window that shows us the promenade on all sides, but the zombies keep getting funneled into it, making the place impossible to use as a scouting location. But we've had some time to consider the tools at our disposal, and we think we have the solution. We'll light up the screen on our laptop, and we're going to make some nailboard traps. We take several minutes to hammer nails into planks at regular intervals. What we're going to do is place them over in this doorway, pointy side up. Zombies will step on them, take damage, and start bleeding. It's a really small amount of damage, but since it's such a high traffic area, they'll track back and forth over them multiple times as they wander around. We take off our trench coat, our hunting vest, and anything extra that's going to get in the way. We will wield our baton and prepare for a fight. This time there are only a couple of undead waiting for us. We use our choke point and batter them into the ground, one by one. Let's see if they had anything that we want. Pork sticks. Some oxy. We've got a travel pack here, which is a pretty large container. We'll just take it and put it in the laundry pile.
We'll drag those corpses out of the doorway and peek into the clothing store here. The place is a shambles, but it's empty for the moment. Looks like we're in the clear. We head back to our workbench and grab a nailboard trap. Hmm. It's probably not a big deal, but we should be careful about the light here. Yeah, see, this tile just draws, like, differently when we step into it. I guess the lighting is drawn relative to where you're standing, which looks pretty nice, but it is part of what leads to that lighting confusion we talked about earlier. Alright, so we have a row of spikes all laid out here. Let's see if we can get something to step on it. We wave our hands until a zombie out on the promenade turns around and notices us. Ouch. He stepped right on it. We can see now that it has minor bleeding and it's lost one pip of health. And we're just going to leave it there and let nature run its course. We'll go ahead and grab our baton. We do want to make some more of those, but we're short on materials. Let's put our trench coat, utility vest, and leg purse back on. We'll also grab our rifle case. And we'll get something to drink. Pineapple juice and lemonade. a crowbar? Oh, it's over there. We're going to take apart these chairs to try to get some planks and nails. Right, deconstructing just sort of knocks it over now. Maybe the best we can do is just smashing these. Oh, okay. So chairs are no longer made of planks and nails. I don't know when that happened, but it looks like they're made of posts and bolts now. That's new. I kind of like it, but we'll have to look elsewhere. We'll turn off the laptop for now. So where could we get wood? We could probably use this crate. This desk would probably work. And these countertops. So maybe we just need to get back into this hunting store. Our stomach is still growling, so we pull the tab on a can of Spam and eat it cold. It smells and tastes like wet cat food, but at least it's not candy. The store seems quiet. There are some nails here. We'll quickly kick them into a pile back in the hallway. The zombie gets a hand on us, but it isn't able to make it count before we pulverize it with our baton. We avoid a couple of zombies on the west side and walk right into a couple on the east. This could be trouble. 
We drive a hard jab into one that leaves it stunned, then catch the other across the cheek with a sweeping strike. But we're not fast enough to stop first one and then the other from grabbing us. Blood splatters across the industrial carpeting as a vicious melee ensues. We come in with punches and hammer strikes with our nightstick, but we're knocked to the floor as one of our attackers throws his entire weight into us. Even with our growing skill, it's hard to properly maneuver while two former humans are trying to pin us down. So here's the other change I wanted to talk about. This one's still in flux, and it may already be adjusted by now, but basically grabs used to be a fairly weak effect that was very easy to break. Now they're a rather strong effect that's very difficult to break, especially if multiple enemies are grabbing us. Being grabbed slows us down and greatly debuffs both our defense and our offense. The upshot of this is that zombies, especially vanilla zombies, are a lot more dangerous in melee than they used to be. If you're playing the 0.G stable version or earlier, you're probably used to wading into crowds with a decent weapon and some armor and coming out mostly fine on the other side. This might have been fun for the power fantasy, but that isn't really how it tends to go in most of the zombie movies the game is based on. Most of the time in The Walking Dead or a Romero film, if a group of zombies can get their hands on you, you're about to wind up in a gory YouTube compilation. So we'll need to be a lot more careful about that from here on out. We start shoving this big pile of broken display tables toward the back room. This fat zombie wants to get in our way. One-on-one, -on -one, it's no contest. We're still a pretty serious threat as long as we don't let ourselves get tackled. Another zombie approaches, drawn by the sound of the struggle. This time, it doesn't go quite as smoothly. It grabs hold of us and bites hard on our neck, tearing open a filthy wound. In response, we shove it to the ground and beat it into a paste. We're gonna need to take care of this. Our big book of first aid tells us that infection can take a little while to set in, but we'd rather not risk it. We use a healthy splash of antiseptic to wash out the bite wound. It stings, but that's how we know it's working. We also gobble up way too many Sour Patch Kids. Anything to pack on the calories. There's now a big pile of wood on the floor. It's the stuff we hauled in from the shop. We can use it to start making more nailboard traps. Since we're going to be here for a few minutes, it's a good time to apply some bandages. As we work in the dim light, we realize we've been bending a row of nails against the surface of our workbench as we've been hammering on the back, ruining three nails and a board in the process. We toss the botched craft aside. Our little debris pile doesn't seem to have any more nails in it. We're going to need to get more. Our neck's still not looking good. This will work out a lot better if we can score some nails without getting into another fight. Maybe there are some in one of the supply closets? A zombie at the northern edge of the food court spots us peeking out. We don't want to deal with it, so we're just going to shut the door and look elsewhere. The doors at the far end of the corridor open up to the entryway, the space between the interior and exterior doors of the mall. The zombies inside and out can see us, but it looks like it's safe to come through here, because it's all laminated glass. There's a service corridor on the other end. It looks like it's sort of a mirror image of the one that we live in. 
This door leads to the back of that underwear store where we almost died the other day. One of the zombies we were fighting is still in here, barely able to stand up. We're not doing much better, but we can finish it off. Oh, okay, that's awesome. So this zombie had a military rucksack. That's a very big backpack, and it's got some extra straps that you can stick really big items to, like rifles and stuff. The other really cool thing is this e-ink tablet PC. So this is like an e-reader, like a Nook or a Kindle, and these are amazing. We'll take a look at this when we get back to our hideout. We'll just set it down real quick and see if we can break these shelves. We hammer on the displays with our baton, smashing them to pieces. Unfortunately, this puts a dent in our weapon. And of course, a zombie heard all that noise, so we'll just let it come to us. It stumbles and falls against the counter, giving us an opening to batter it. So I wasn't paying attention, and we were actually really out of breath from smashing all that stuff earlier. So that could have been really bad, but it looks like it worked out. We'll just gather up all these nails and planks. That's what we came out here for. 89 nails. That's probably enough, but let's break this desk too. The zombies up above are making a ton of noise. We'll pop in our earplugs. It takes us two and a half hours to haul all the wood back from the underwear store. There really is a lot of it. Since our bandages are looking good, we'll just get back to work. Okay, that's another set of three done. Let's make a few more. It's time to get these traps set up. We're gonna check out the shop next door, so Let's grab our baton. Okay, actually, that baton is in pretty bad shape. So we'll just make another cudgel. We hear a sound that's becoming kind of familiar as we work. It's a zombie death rattle. Maybe our trap caught something. Somehow, our Home Alone tier trap has created a massacre. We can see at least nine bodies heaped up in the doorway, and there's blood everywhere. This has worked out really well. We can now use this store to safely scout out the food court. From here, we can actually see that there's an entire cake sitting out on the counter. We want that cake. We can also grab up the broken shelving in here. A zombie stumbles around at the edge of the light. It keeps stepping on our nailboard traps and it's bleeding all over the place. stepped on it again. A 
and down it goes. As we stomp the corpses, we discover something strange about one of them. There's a strong chemical stench coming off of it, and the fluid leaking out of it is sizzling and smoking as it comes into contact with the blood from the others. We decide not to smash it. We drag it back into the darkness and carefully use our knife to chop it up. This takes a lot longer than smashing it would have, but we can do it without getting the acidic fluid all over ourselves. We're not really sure what to make of this. We've seen some pretty putrid zombies. Maybe this one was like getting embalmed when it came back to life, or something? That doesn't really make sense, though. At least we can check to see if these zombies brought us anything. It's kind of like getting loot delivered to our door. A couple of memory cards. Sew so Awesome Monthly. That's a magazine about sewing. It's probably below our skill level, but it's going to have a couple of tailoring recipes in it. Severed at the waist, a half of a zombie drags itself over the spike traps. We bash its head in as it comes close. So now that we have all these nail boards, we can start putting them up. We want to put some in the hunting store's doorway. We could also put some down here by the food court. There's a zombie waiting for us when we open the door. We easily beat it down with our cudgel. It looks like another one spotted us. We'll try and move the body and see if we can just shut the door on it. Ah, uh, okay. We couldn't move the body in time. The zombie catches up to us and bites deep into our forearm as we try to shove it off. We left the cudgel on the floor behind us, just out of reach. We're gonna have to break free to get our weapon back. We managed to take it out, but that's a deep bite on our arm. A third one shambles toward us. And it goes down. Well, at least they brought us some chips. We need the food pretty badly. We shove the corpses into the supply closet and deploy some of our nail board traps out by the fountain. The little snack shop on the south end here would be a great place to put some, but we'd be spotted if we went out there. Let's do the hunting store. The zombie moves toward us in the dark. We sprint over to the other side of the shop to try to shake it off. So, ordinary zombies have actually lost their scent ability thanks to a recent change. It'll be a lot easier for us to sneak around in the dark now as long as we stay quiet.
We want to make more traps, but maybe we should clean our wounds up. a bunch of Swedish fish while we work. The sound of another death rattle gets our attention. Free loot! Looks like one of the zombies made it past our perimeter. Down it goes. We realize there's a bunch of shattered glass out beneath the skylight and the breeze is coming through. What could possibly have broken it? grab these pain pills. Where else can we lay down some traps? Maybe out here by the snack shop? Oh, there are actually a lot of nails out here. You know, the coast even looks sort of clear. Let's move our nail board traps out closer to the food court. Taking a look around, we can see that there's some food left out on the tables. A couple of sodas, and a box of onion rings. We can do this side too. We've been spotted. We'll just lay down one of these traps behind us and shut the door. We had to leave our cudgel out there, so let's make another one. It sounds like the traps are working at least. The sound of bodies hitting the floor is music to our ears. We're now lightly weary. That's an additional 25% move penalty in combat. So let's just take it easy back here for the rest of the day. We need something to drink. Let's have some energy cola. Also, let's spark a J. Like, why not? So, this stuff has some strong morale boosting effects. It's also giving us a painkiller effect, which isn't very strong at the moment, but if we took more, it would. 
and it'll eventually slow us down a bit. It's all pretty mild, though. So earlier we were looking at some leather crafting, but we don't have a way to wash that leather gear we found, and you can't craft with filthy gear. But we did find some other leather stuff. Let's just sort the place out real fast. Okay, so some of these rifle cases are leather. We're currently using a leather double rifle case. We can switch it out for a nylon one and use this one for scraps. Let's take this one over to this naturally lit area. Actually, we'll bring a chair over here, too. We'll go ahead and cut this up. We could carefully deconstruct it to get more material, but there's a bug with that right now that's causing the game to crash when I do it. Also, it takes a really long time. Alright, and if we look at our crafting menu, we can make leather armor gauntlets. I tend not to wear armored gloves because your hands don't really get hit very often, and hand encumbrance causes a lot of problems. What we could do is practice our beginner leather working. Principles of leather working is a really good proficiency to pick up because a lot of the leather armor pieces need two or three proficiencies to make, and the speed penalties and failure rates compound each other. So having one missing proficiency is okay, Having two or three starts to become really onerous. And the leatherworking proficiencies aren't just used for this basic leather armor that we're trying to make. They're actually used for all kinds of things. So these are awesome to pick up. We take a few patches of leather and start trying different ways of sewing them together to try to figure out how it all works. Leatherworking is a lot different from fabric sewing. You need stronger stitching and the material is obviously a lot thicker and heavier. This won't take us too long. So we spend about five and a half hours practicing like this, and we're now proficient in beginner leatherworking. This is gonna save us a ton of time and resources down the way. So it's great that we were able to get this done. Plus, if we ever meet a punk rock boy, we can sew some band patches on his jacket. We'll take a break from crafting to work on something else. How about unarmed? We're going to do some shadow boxing and try to just get used to the idea of fighting with our hands. This one opens up arm block in the brawling martial art. Now, anytime we're not wielding a good weapon or wearing an arm guard for blocking, we can still block with our arms. This will do just a bit of damage to the arm, but it's a lot less than what we take if we got hit normally. Laffy's potato chips and maybe a drink. Lemon lime soda. We could try some more practice, but uh, our focus is not looking great. Our morale's fine, it's just that we've been working too hard. Maybe we can mess around with that e-ink tablet PC that we found. Uh... Where'd it go? We'll take a peek out here. Yeah, it looks like we caught another zombie. Night has fallen, so that might be helpful. We suddenly realize where the tablet is. We must have left it at the underwear shop when we were gathering up all those nails.
Yikes! Barely got away from that one. We'll come back later. We can use the darkness to sneak out and set up these traps by the food court. There's some more stuff in the hunting store. We'll just go through and we'll gather up all the leather and nails that we can find. And there are more dead zombies out here. These traps are awesome. We step out into the promenade, bathing in the moonlight that filters down through the shattered skylight. A cool breeze blows through the mall. It's not enough to dispel the putrid stink of the bodies, but it's still refreshing. Here's an SD memory card that we missed. And there are some arrows out here. We can dump at least some of this junk out on the floor. We'll go ahead and sort the place out again. And now we can cut up these leather rifle cases. And let's read a comic book. Just chill out a bit. We'll do some stretches. just past midnight, so we'll have our vitamins again. We are pretty happy back here given the circumstances, but fatigue is now tanking our focus. We'll start working on advanced leatherworking. This will actually help boost our tailoring skill too, and like principles of leatherworking, it's going to help with all kinds of crafts. After about an hour, we start getting frustrated. We're just too sleepy for work like this.
We have some candy and eventually wind up nodding off in our chair. The traps worked out better than we could have imagined, but we're starting to go a little stir-crazy in our hideout. What's worse, we're getting low on food. Tomorrow, we're going to solve both of those problems, and we're going to get to that fountain. <laughs>